we have, for these are absolute value functions, so we have both um, equal signs and we can have inequality symbols. So if I have an inequality, it's just shading, right? So if I have example 5a, that is the absolute value here of 2x plus 1 is greater than 7. So my absolute value, I'm going to make these darker so you don't think they're 1s. My absolute value of 2x plus 1 is greater than 7. So I want to know all the values that are going to make this greater than 7. Same concept applies. I still have to say, where are my guts? whenever I'm looking at this, to the positive and negative. Now, think back to your inequalities. I want to know where my guts here are positive and where my guts are negative. If you think back to inequalities, what happened whenever you divided by a negative? So what I'm really saying is this positive and the negative of this 2x plus 1 is greater than 7. What happens whenever I divide by a negative 1 with my inequality? Flip the sign. Good. So when you do this, I'm, I'm going to say, don't write this step. It's totally unnecessary. Just jump right to this. But you have to pay attention because on here, when you have the negative, you have to flip the sign for the negative. So make sure you're paying attention to that. All right? Okay. Then you just go back through and you solve again. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. 2x is now greater than 6. x is greater than 3. I'm going to go over here, subtract 1. 2x is less than negative 8. x is less than negative 4. When you have an inequality, you always have to write it in interval notation. So mark it down. From negative 4 to 3, I want the x values that are less than negative 4 and the x values that are greater than 3. This is just a greater than symbol, so I'm going to use parentheses, and there it is. When you jump over that middle, then, and this is what happens, so really I'm looking at my absolute value function like this, right? I want to say what are all of the values here that are greater than 7, and then whenever I'm looking at this, that's how I'm going to shade out from that. Okay, so um, let's write it out. I now have from negative infinity up to negative 4 union with 3 to infinity. So remember, whenever you do your abs uh, inequalities and you write out your inequalities, if you have it greater than, or if you're jumping over, then you have to use that union symbol. All right, I want all the values that are bigger, so you're going to shade to that outside, and then that's going to be that union symbol. We can do the same kind of thing here with that less than. The absolute value of 2x plus 1 is less than 7. So, exact same thing. 2x plus 1 is less than 7. And 2x plus 1, flip for the negative, flip for the negative, flip for the negative. Then solve, and we're getting really good at solving this problem now. Subtract 1 from both sides. 2x is greater than negative 8. x is now greater than negative 4. When I have negative 4 and 3, I want the values that are less than 3 and the values that are greater than negative 4. Look at what just happened here. Now I'm shading to the inside. Still have the parentheses. This is that and statement. So I'm going to go from negative 4 to 3. I'm not jumping over anything and I've got the parentheses because of the absolute value or the, the inequality, the less than sign. So then I'm shading between. You have three choices, right? If it's an equal sign, you have a number. If it is a less than symbol like here, it's going to be an and statement where you shade in the middle. If you have an or statement because it's greater than over here, that's when you do your union. But you're gonna just need to make sure you're paying attention. You gotta flip for that negative that makes an impact.
whenever you're looking at it. If you have a problem like this, here's example 6b, we have the absolute value of 4 minus 3x is greater than or equal to 2. So do it up. 4 minus 3x is greater than or equal to 2. 4 minus 3x is less than or equal to a negative 2. Flip for that negative. And then solve it. Oh, my goodness, I wrote the wrong thing. That just should be a 4. My bad. You guys are probably saying, whoa. <laughs> if you subtract 4 here, I've got negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 1. What's happening now? Divide by that negative, flip that sign, right? Same thing, over and over. Subtract 4 from both sides. Negative 3x is now less than or equal to negative 3. Pardon me, negative 6. x is now greater than or equal to 2. Again, any time you divide by that negative, you have to flip that sign. So now I have 1 third and 2. I want the x values that are smaller than 1 third and greater than 2. Because this is an or equal to sign, it becomes that bracket. So negative infinity to 1 third union with 2 to infinity. So you just have that. Not too bad, right? Just flip for that negative. That's the biggest thing. All right, check this out. So absolute value always has to be positive. Because I know that this has to be positive, what happens if I'm trying to solve the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to a negative 1? Is there any possible way or anything I can put in for the value of x that my absolute value is going to equal a negative number? Right? Nope. Cannot equal a negative number. Cannot equal a negative number. So this one is no solution. You can't have an absolute value. So when you have absolute value, there are some special case scenarios. And that is one of them. What happens if I have an absolute value here? of x minus 2, we'll just keep going with the same thing, is less than a negative 1. What kind of numbers are less than a negative 1? This one's going to represent more negative, right? So can I have more negative here? No. No, there's no possible way that an absolute value is going to be equivalent to a negative number, so even, so less than a negative number is going to be more negative. Again, this one is no solution, or it's called the empty set sometimes. It's that uh, circle with a line through it means the empty set, that there's nothing in there that's going to make that statement true. So last but not least, what if I have the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than negative 1? So I need to adjust this. That says more negative, so this can't be more negative. Because that always represents, this always represents a positive number. Because absolute value is positive, right? So there's no possible way for that to be more negative on 7b. However, look at this one. If that always represents a positive number, is a positive number going to be greater than a negative number? Every single time. Every single time. It doesn't matter what value of x I put in there. It doesn't matter because when I take that absolute value, it's going to be a positive number. So this one has infinite solutions. Anything works. Because a positive number is always greater than a negative number. 
So watch out for that. So really what you're looking out for here is just making sure that if you see a negative on the outside, think about these special case scenarios. The only time, it's, so it's always negatory, 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 except when my absolute value is greater than that negative number. If it's greater than that negative number, then it's okay. So you have to isolate your absolute value. Once you have your absolute value isolated, then when you work with it, then that, that's what makes it happen. Real quick, for instance, if we were to have something like number 60, where you have the absolute value of 2x plus 4 plus 2 equals 10, before you start working out that absolute value, you have to isolate it first. If you don't isolate your absolute value, then your answer is not going to be accurate. When I have a problem like this, I now am going to split up with eight. So I have to split this up to be a positive eight and a negative eight. Do not work with this in terms of 10, you're gonna get it wrong. You have to isolate the absolute value first and then solve it. Okay, very good guys. You got this.